Hello there, Cassidy speaking. It's been a while since I've done a video, um, mostly because I haven't had much to say, but um, here I am. And uh, uh, catching up on a few things here. It's um, to use that old expression that was written by uh, a famous author some time ago. This was the best of weeks, <laughs> was the worst of weeks. Uh, this was a very hard time. Uh, the good parts were good. I saw my HRT doctor on Monday, and uh, she said my hormones are fine. My hormone levels are where they should be. Uh, she was concerned about my prolactin level, and um, it's actually went down a little bit. I don't need an MRI. <laughs> Everything looks good. So I don't have to go back and see her until July. I don't need to do additional labs until January. And she and I only have three more visits. And then I am, as she says, a graduate. And um, I'm officially on my own. You know, I'm just another trans girl out there in the big world. Yesterday, I had my first experience with having my beard removed. And um, I had laser, uh, laser, whatever you want to call it. It's not surgery, but um, the person I went and saw, she went over my face with a laser and burned off hair. If you uh, read my blog today, you would have seen that I mentioned <laughs> the smell of burning hair was um, was everywhere. It was kept stayed with me on the drive back. Uh, that's not to be confused with the song "Burning Rope" by Genesis. Uh, burning hair—it's something <laughs> completely different. But uh, I go back on Monday. We're going to do electrolysis on Monday and try to get rid of the um, the dark spots, the dark hairs on my upper lip and around the sides and stuff. And she's pretty hopeful that I won't need a lot of work, but um, I did notice this morning that the beard did not come back in as much today, so it was all burned off. And I, I told her, I hope by the end of summer, that it's completely gone. That's the idea. I want to have that nice, smooth, girlish skin. As for the bad parts, um, Monday I blistered the bottoms of my feet, my heels, horribly. I decided to walk to work in a pair of espadrilles <laughs> sandals with heels. And um, about two-thirds of the way there, about three-quarters of the way, my feet were screaming at me um, because they hurt so bad. And it's just been um, a weird week. It's been a hard week. And today I actually had something happen that had never happened before. I'm nine months into HRT. I'm almost three months out completely uh, at work, which means I'm 24-7 living the life, la, la vocalita or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, but I'm living, I'm living the woman's life now. Uh, there is no old me anymore. It's just this. And uh, as I've said before, on hormones, you're essentially going through puberty. I'm 57 years old and I'm going through secondary puberty. And today, um, I'm in the process of finishing up a program that's supposed to go live next week. And people are just getting around to testing it today uh, with a multitude of changes that I had to spend like two days uh, cranking out. And around quarter to three or so, which is always a good time to come, quarter to three on a Friday, that's always a good time to find someone, uh, I start hearing about how the program's not doing something. And when I began talking to one of the managers, he's pointing out something in an email that he sent to me, uh, saying, well, this is what it has to do. And I said, well, that wasn't relayed to me in the meeting we had the other day. And he's like, well, I didn't know how else to explain it. I, I thought you'd figure it out. And uh, I was 
I was, needless to say, uh, I was in pretty bad shape. In the past, whenever something like that would happen, I'd just sort of clamp down and get real cold and uh, stew on the situation for maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Maybe go off and um, swear a little, not violently, but you know, keep everything in check. But today I went through such a cycle of emotions. Um, I stalked off to the coffee, um, the coffee area, the break room, and um, I was just livid. I mean, you talk about flipping the bitch switch. It had been flipped. <laughs> it had been flipped and it had been broken. And I was, well first I was so upset. I was using a Keurig and I threw my, my container in there and I put it down, pushed it down and I powered up the machine and I look over and I hadn't even put my cup under the spigot. So, you know, I had to wash everything out and, um, dump the coffee and rerun it. And the whole time I'm just, you know, just murder facing everything. I was, actually, I came this close, you know, that close. <laughs> I came that close to just throwing my coffee cup across the break room. I mean, I was, I wasn't screaming, but I wanted to, and I just, was furious. I mean, really, not guy angry, where it's just this internal rage that comes out. I was just like in a bitchy foul, I want to kill somebody mood. And it was so bad when I was walking back to my, my office that once I got down there, the receptionist, I had to pass her and she calls me and she goes, are you all right? because you didn't seem all right when you walked by. And I said, no, I'm fine, don't worry about it. And um, a f about a minute later, I'm, I'm looking at the code and I just completely lose it. I don't mean angry lose it. I mean, I just took off my glasses and I put my, my hands over my eyes and I just started weeping. And I was going, I just can't take this. I can't do it anymore. I just can't take it. And I was, I could feel, it was like this roller coaster of emotions just so wafing over me. And that went on for about two or three minutes. And then I just sat back and I said, Cassie, you've got to focus. You've got to do this job. You've got to focus, you know, get it together. And I got up and I walked away. I walked into another part of the building where it was quiet and there was nobody there. And I, you know, basically said, you lost it. You, you really lost it there for a moment. Get it together. Let's get the job done. And I knew it needed to be done. I went and talked to the manager. I said, how do you want to do this? Here's what I'm thinking. And he told me what to do. And I said, okay, groovy, let's, let's just do this. But um, it was an unusual situation in that for the first time, I really could feel how a cis woman might react in a similar situation. I was just yo-yoing back and forth between inarticulate, not inarticulate rage, I knew exactly what I was saying, but it was just this, this furious rage of, I wanna kill someone, to just completely breaking down and sobbing. And even when I walked into the manager's office to talk to him, my cheeks were still wet. I didn't even bother wiping anything off because I knew I'd remove makeup. And I, my cheeks were still wet when I walked in. I think he noticed that, that I was sitting there um, just completely trying to pull myself together.
and of course on the walk home I'm analyzing all of this and I'm thinking you know this is the stuff that men when they see this happening to women they're like <laughs> you know why do they act that way why can't they just you know why can't, why can't they just be like us and tough it out but I couldn't I mean I really had to the sort of get it out of my system before I could move on. There was no locking it down this time. In the past, I would, I would usually lock things down and just push it aside and stay pissed off the whole time. And I would code in a state of high pissed off. And this time I just went from being pissed off to demoralized to sitting there at my desk crying. And I mean, I was crying. I, I know somebody had to have hurt me because I was crying and then I just pulled myself together and, and you know it was like you know to use the the Tina Fey expression bitches get shit done and I'm a bitch so I got it done and not only did I get that change done but I got two other changes done that I knew needed to be done and um, walked out of the office about a quarter till five feeling like I had actually accomplished something. In fact, my manager even said, don't worry about making this last change, you can do it on Monday. And I, I told him, I said, I know it needs to be done. I'm just gonna do it, you know, screw it. I know it needs to be done, I'm, I'm on it. And uh, that was it. It's interesting that in just the short time that I've been on hormones, in the short time that I've been living this life that I'm seeing so many different th aspects of another person that I never noticed before. I've always been emotional. I could always cry easy. But what happened to me today has happened to me, you know, dozens of times in the past. I've been doing programming for 30 years. I know how to handle situations like that. But in the past, I've always just like, you know, screw it, I'm gonna stay pissed off at people, I'm gonna get it done. This time, I really was at the point where I wanted to just get up and leave. I wanted to grab my purse and just get out of town. And then, after I was all out of my system and after I'd calmed myself down, I said, you know, I gotta do this. You know, let's, get to, let's get to work. And I focused in a way that I really had never focused before. I mean, it was with an amazing amount of clarity and I was able to get it done. So, guys out there who may be watching this, who is like, mm, those women, those chicks, those girls, uh, you know, they. They're just so emotional. You pump nine months worth of estrogen into your body and let's see how you handle the changes. Seriously, estrogen jacks you around like nobody's business. It, I have noticed a multitude of things that have happened to me, not the least of which are the girls, <laughs> but um, I've said this before, it pulls whatever filters you have in your brain down in terms of emotional responses. And the thing I had to do today is when I wanted to start throwing, th I mean literally throwing things around the break room, I had to halt myself. I really did. I had to say, don't do this, you are going to get in a lot of trouble because I really was worried if I start throwing things around and I start ranting and I start raving and I start screaming and I start crying, you know, people are going to walk in and say, check out the chick, she's nuts. And they would have been, it, it would have been justifiable. <laughs> It was 
probably one of the watershed moments for me where I'm sort of like now, wow, I really have to watch myself there. I've been overly emotional before, but it's always been in my apartment. There's been a couple of times where I've done so at work. But this was one where it just came on and it was a combination of sad, mad, glad, pissed off, weepy, feeling sorry for myself, wanting to give up and just say the hell with it. Like I said, it was a roller coaster. It was like the biggest ride you could have at Six Flags or what have you. It just drove me nuts. And it doesn't help that the last few weeks have been going through some rather <laughs> emotional changes. Um, I've been suffering from some, some. <laughs> I've been suffering from depression. There's no such thing as some. Well, it's just a little bit of depression. Not a lot, just a little bit. Um, I've been suffering from depression. Uh, I've felt myself at times shutting down again, shutting down my emotions, trying not to let them go, trying to push certain things out of my head so that I don't think about them. It has not been a good time. And today just sort of was the cultivation of all of those bad times coming at me and slapping me upside the head and say, say hey girl, <laughs> hey girl, how you doing? Um, I'm going to make your life hell. And I came out on the other side of it pretty good. I, I slapped reality back, if you want to say so, and I went out, got home, and I paid my American Express bill, and went out and had something to eat, and had dessert, and had a couple of dinner drinks, uh, too, because I needed them. And I'm back here, by myself. But I'll keep it together, because that's what I do. If you're going to live the life, you got to deal with it. You, if you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. And there's only so many of us that can really walk the walk with Team Vagina. And if you can't do it, then just, you know, admit you can't and go on with your life. It's for me, I got through today. I got through this week. I've gotten through the last month. I've had pretty hard times. But I'm still here. And that's really what counts. You know, bitches get shit done. <laughs> I'm gonna get it done. And I want to say this for one special person who, who may or may not see this. I haven't seen much of you. I haven't talked to you in a while. But I've told you this before. I'll wait for however long it takes for you to know I'm here for you. And when the wait is over, it's going to be worth it. I want to be the one who catches your tears. makes them feel better. Just like one of my characters did to his girlfriend. 
I want to do the same for you. So maybe you'll see this, maybe you won't. But I'll always keep waiting. Bye.